Hey everybody, welcome to American Beer TV. We are chilling summer style with Anniversary Ale from from uh, Great Divide. So this is their 17th Great anniversary. Divide. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this one uh, was bottled in April on April 29th, and uh, it's been in the bottle for a few months. Yeah. yeah. So we're doing this here. You wouldn't guess it based on the atmosphere, but yes, this is technically October, um, but that's the way it is in California. Uh, yeah, so we we're just figuring out. We have a nice day outside, relax, and yeah. drink some beers with you all. And, yeah, sounds you know. like a plan. So what this is? This is their uh, 17th anniversary. It is a. It says it's a wood aged double IPA. So it's a double IPA. Ten percent. Yeah, that's been aged on. Uh, on oak chips it says so uh -huh. pale ale aged on oak chips so yeah this is a uh, 10 yeah. yeah straight up 10 yeah great divide does a lot of that where they they don't do like barrel age or bourbon barrels or stuff like that yeah, but they, they just age in wood which right. which would be either the what are the slaves or saves the staffs staffs sorry right Staves. Yeah. No, it's uh. Staves. Yeah. Staves. Yeah. The oak uh, oak staves. Uh, uh, or yeah, uh, they're the strips from the barrels, right. basically. And so. they put that in there, or they do actual chips. And so then now they're starting to get in a lot of debate about what's the different properties of of those chips because the chips are smaller. They can get totally surrounded. You can actually get a little more surface area out of using uh, uh, chips uh, actually in contact with the beer. Um, versus so. a barrel. Some people say, depending on the amount of oak you use. Yeah, so I mean, there's a, a there's a bit of a debate going a, about that. A minimal amount of uh, contact with the beer. Correct. So, so I think it's and a, it's, it's and, a and, time issue too. And it could also not be even. So you get the the beer that's on the outside. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're fermenting, it's gonna the beer's gonna be moving. Mm -hmm. But once it's fermented, it's and it's still, uh, it's gonna. Unless you shake it up or something, it's going to stay there. And so the parts that are in contact with the wood are going to remain well, there while the like center Well, because there's like Firestone Brewing Company does their whole uh, double barrel ale. Yeah. Where they actually run it through the union barrels where they're fermenting right. inside wooden barrels. Yeah. Which adds a little bit of character And it adds a little beer. bit more different yeah. flavor profile to the beer. I know. Uh, but that's a quick process too. It's not like mm -hmm. it's not like it's sitting in a barrel for a month, of, you know, or a month yeah. or even 12 months or exactly. whatever. Like now they don't, the they don't they don't mention uh, how much they how long they did it. Um, they do talk about um, secret. French and American oak they use. So 17th anniversary. Let's uh, take a look at I it. I know some of the guys use those cubes too. So they may even <laughs> yeah. take like or trimmings from barrels, you know. Right, right, right. They may get a deal where they get, you know, trimmings from the barrel producers, and then they use that yeah. to brew their beer too. So I know wineries do that too, mm -hmm. you know. And then home winemakers use the staves or whatever for the their chips and the cubes chips and all those. And, yeah. So let's get into it. It's kind of got a coppery, mm -hmm. orange, very hue copper, to it. a little hazy, um, a little chill haze, I would say. Because yeah. other, I mean, it's fairly bright. I think that really the the haze is coming from the temperature. Yeah, I think I was getting a little more, a little bit of chunks in there. You got um, the bottom end, yeah. Mine's I think so. So I wonder if this top. is bottle, bottle conditioned. Um, no, there's no. not too much. There's a little bit of sediment, but it's okay. really mild. It's no not. Worries. There's not a yeast cake at the bottom of the right. bottle at all. So, see how it smells. Earthy we didn't get much aroma. Yeah, very earthy. We didn't get much uh, carbonation on that, uh, a tremendous amount. But yeah, it, it you're getting you're definitely getting hops. You're getting um, you are getting some malt profile, and you're getting some of that some of that wood characteristic um, comes through. I mean, pretty much everything that says yeah, really in mild, there. Yeah. Uh, it's got a nice aroma. Malt sweetness comes through. It's got yeah, a real it's nice really aroma. clean mm -hmm. aroma. Yeah, really nice and clean. A little bit of a bready, biscuity kind mm -hmm. of malts yeah. going on. Uh -huh. yeah. So, it smells real nice. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. That is nice. Whoa. Yeah. The oak really comes mm -hmm. through in the palate. Really comes through. Get that malt sweetness. Mm -hmm. It has like a... I think the oak carries on like almost like a berry characteristic that comes through. It's weird. Yeah, there's a little bit of a, a fruitiness to it. Oh, 
Although I'm not, yeah. Wow, I'm impressed. Yeah, it's got a lot of malt sweetness, but then at the wood, the wood flavor is there present kind of throughout the drink. Mm -hmm. Um, Up front, you get that malty sweetness, and then when that drops out, then the hops kind of pick up where that left off, although a little mellower, but over like an umbrella. Just it doesn't have that that West Coast super dry hopped characteristic at all. No. No, it's it doesn't. very like like beginning to end hops, and then the different levels of complexity right. changes. It I would almost palate. classify nice. this as a multi this is beer. Good. This is really good. This this is a, a really excellent beer. I would. It's weird to say that there's an IPA that's multi. That's. I think this beer is a little more multi. And I than think hoppy. the. I think the uh, I think the woods helping mm-hmm. bring that out. The woods adding like a level the a, vanilla another, notes. Yeah, another level. You are of definitely green. getting that vanilla notes is playing off of the um, Ooh, playing good. off the malt. Yeah, this it's is drinkable. It does not taste ten percent either. No, you get a little bit of heat, but it's really mild. Yeah. No, it, this is really drinkable for ten percent, and um, the hops are there, but they don't. They don't overpower like you would think. Actually, I think the the maltiness is more more present than uh, than hops. Yeah, and you can see idea. they're definitely using you know they're using some crystal malt yeah. I'm sure, and probably some other specialty grains in there mm-hmm. to give it some color. It's beautiful. It looks good. It's got a nice nose. Yeah, I mean this is, is a really is nice beer from killer beer. To end. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. this one's excellent. Glad we could share see, it with yeah, you. Definitely. See if you can. Uh, still find any if you don't already have some or if you're selling it um and that could be one of the reasons why the hop i I want to just throw this in could be one of the reasons why the hop characteristic is not as pronounced now because this has been aged for six months hops hops have a tendency after yeah i know after a year i was reading uh one of my homebrew books that after about a year hops will lose about 10 percent of their Mm -hmm. alpha acids um, so after six months, we're going to lose five percent of the alpha yeah. acids. So. Yeah, I think this beer, you know, fresh off the bottling line would taste a lot different. But, would probably be a little but bit. But I hobby. think it's nice. There's some other characteristics yeah. coming through too. Maybe the oak kind of pulls through a little yeah. bit more too. But I, I think it's nice. I think it's great. I think I, you know, very very nice. So excellent. You should have bought a case in there. I know. That's what seriously. You done. Cheers. Definitely. Cheers. Have a good one. Get out there and drink craft beer. <laughs>